game development animations and twins and this is pretty much the last we're gonna refresh it so this is what we did in the previous video so they has full functionality so we are playing this game right now and we can see we have three lives and the points are adding on so we can play this game and if i lost here on purpose okay so now i have two lives i can okay start playing again and let me see i'm gonna lose on purpose again so i'm gonna have one more life and let's do it again oops maybe i'm gonna win so let's just let that and okay you lost game over so that is that so now we're gonna have animations and twins and you can click in this link it's gonna get you to the github repository for the code if you wanna check it out okay so to make the game look more juicy and alive we can use animations and twins and this is short for betweens this will result in a better more entertaining experience let's explore how to implement phaser animations and twins in our game so animations and phaser animations involved taking a sprite sheet from an external source and displaying the sprite sequentially as an example we will make the ball uh, wobble when it hits something so let's try it here as you can see once the ball hits the brick nothing is happening it's just pretty much uh, hitting the ball and the brick is disappearing on contact so we're going to change that first grab the split sheet from the github and save it in your slash img directory so let's do that i just click here and pretty much it's going to be this so this is going to be the wow all effect so just download it to your to the folder you're working on it i'm gonna go right now into my downloads folder i'm just gonna control x so i can cut it and i'm gonna go into my program jx and i'm gonna go into my f game phaser and i go into my folder image so i'm gonna paste it here and if i go to my folder image here in this folder name game phaser i can click in the in the wow so this is what we have here okay so let's keep moving okay so here next we will load the spreadsheet put the following line at the bottom of your preload function so we're gonna go to the preload function and let me see what is the preload function okay so this is the preload function and we're gonna go into the bottom so it's gonna be gain that image well load so we're gonna load it and it's gonna be image we're gonna open parentheses curly braces and it's gonna be it's gonna be like this it's gonna be wobble okay and it's gonna be inside of the img folder and then it's gonna be, we're gonna name it we're gonna name it wobble that png like this so let's see if that's correct so we're gonna game that load and okay so this time we're not downloading or loading the the image but it's gonna be the sprite it's gonna be the sprite sheet okay it's gonna be the sprite sheet and it's gonna be uh, we're passing four expressions the ball the image okay the image slash wobble the png and then two numbers so it's gonna be the 20 comma 20 and we're gonna end it with semicolon or yeah we can end it with semicolon maybe and let's send those with semicolon as well so we have that and we can save it up to this point okay so nothing's gonna happen obviously let me see okay so we have that instead of loading a single image of the ball we can load the whole sprite sheet a collection of different images we will show the sprites sequentially to create the illusion of animation the sprite sheet methods two extra parameters determine the width and height of each single frame and the given sprite sheet file indicating to the program how to chop it up and to get the individual frames okay so we have that and let me see okay so you can change the colors if you want so we have here the hexa color okay so now loading the animation next up go into your create function find the line that loads the ball sprite and below it put the call to animation that as seen below so we're gonna go let me see 
go to your create function so we're gonna go here in our create function okay and find the line that loads the ball sprite so let me see the load okay it's gonna be it's gonna be this one okay so no it has to be the ball sprite okay so ball okay so it's gonna be here and this okay so m okay find the line that loads the ball sprite and below we put the call to animations that add scene below okay so let me see we're gonna have we're gonna have animations okay it's gonna be okay so we need to go below this one so this is the ball and we're setting it to the gain that add that sprite okay so here we're gonna have these two lines of code so it's gonna be the ball and we're gonna we're gonna set it this time to the game that add that sprite and we're gonna pass in 50 the number 50 then 250 and then the boolean true like that i mean uh, let me see 50 250 and then we're gonna pass in ball like this okay i'm gonna move it okay so we have the ball and we are setting the setting it to the game that is prime we're passing 50 250 ball okay and below that we are gonna pass in the the ball that animation ball that animations animations like that ball that animations that add okay and we're gonna pass in the the wobble okay we separate with a comma and we're gonna pass in an array and we're gonna have okay i just can copy this this array so it's just numbers okay so we're gonna pass in this array and what else okay comma and then we're gonna pass in this number 24 semicolon at the end so we have that up to this point now nothing is okay so it has moved a little bit let me see to add an animation to the object we use the animation that add method which contains the following parameters the name we chose for the animation the array defining the order in which to display the frames during the animation if you look again at the wobble.png image, you will see there are three frames. Phaser extracts these and store references to them in an array. Position 0, 1, and 2. And this is what we have here, position 0, 1, and 2. Okay. The above array says that we are displaying frame 0, then 1, then 0, etc. The frame rate and FPS, since we are running the animation at uh, 24 fps and there are nine frames the animation will display just under three times per second okay so applying the animation when the ball hits the paddle and the archive collide method call the handle the collision between the ball and the paddle the first line inside the update see below we can add an extra parameter that specifies a function to be executed every time the collision happens in the same fashion as the ball hit brick function update the first line inside of the update as shown so now we're gonna update the the first line and we're gonna go way below into the update function let me see is this one and here we have gain the physics and the physics so let me see which one we're gonna update so gain the physics arcade a collide ball the paddle okay so we just need to wait a minute uh, okay ball hit paddle and ball hit brick okay so here we're gonna add uh, ball hit paddle like this okay okay so we're gonna name it ball hit paddle okay yeah nothing is happening here okay so we have that for now then we can create the ball hit paddle function having ball and paddle as default parameters playing the wobble animation when it is called at the following function just before the closing script tag and again we don't have that but we can just go in our javascript file to the end and just pretty much type a function and it's gonna be ball there's one ball hit uh, ball hit paddle okay and we are gonna 
okay we are gonna pass in the ball in the paddle in the parentheses ball as well as the paddle and inside of the curly braces we are gonna we are gonna pass in the ball that animation that place is gonna be ball oops has to be here ball that animations that ball that animations that play okay and we are gonna pass in the wobble okay then semicolon at the end okay so let me see what else do we have here okay so now it's moving a little bit or changing a little bit so that's that let me see let me see the code is right function ball hit paddle we have the ball we have the paddle then we have the ball that animation and uh, animations that play and then we're passing the wobble okay so that's fine the animation is play every time the ball hits the paddle you can add the animation that play called inside the ball hit brick function too if you feel it would make the game look better so twins whereas animations play external is uh, sprite sequentially twins smoothly anime properties of an object in the game world such as width or opacity let's add a twin to our game to make it to make the bricks smooth smoothly disappear when they are hit by the ball go to your ball hit brick function find your find your brick that key line and replace it with the following okay so let me see we are gonna go to our ball hit brick function okay now i'm just gonna control f and i'm gonna type in ball hit uh, ball hit brick like that function and we already have it here so we have that and we have here the brick that kill okay so find your brick that kill line and replace it with the following okay so we are gonna replace this line and we are gonna replace it with this piece of code so we are gonna have um, cons, the constant declaration we're gonna name it kill kill twin like that kill twin and we're gonna set it to the game we're gonna set it to the game that add that that twin like that uh, okay like this that twin and then we're gonna open parentheses and we're gonna pass in the brick that scale okay and then we're gonna end it with a semicolon so we have the constant kill twin and then gain that add twin and we're passing brick that scale in the in the parentheses now we're gonna have the the kill twin and we're gonna have it two okay so two we're gonna open parentheses we're gonna have an object so we're gonna have this object with key value pair so it's gonna be the x coordinate zero okay and we're gonna separate by a comma we're gonna have the y coordinate as well zero as a second expression inside of the parentheses we're gonna have the number 200 and then we're gonna have in the phaser the phaser that is gonna be easing easing that linear okay that and that now okay so we have that we end it with a semicolon and now we're gonna have in the the kill twin is gonna be that on complete so it's gonna be kill twin on complete that okay at once okay and we're gonna open parentheses inside of the parentheses we are gonna have an error function okay so we're gonna open curly braces here and inside of the curly braces we're gonna have the the brick that the brick that kill so this is where we're gonna have the brick that kill and we're gonna end it with a semicolon okay just after the curly brace we're gonna add the this okay so a comma and then this we're gonna end it with a semicolon and finally we're gonna call the kill uh, let me see kill that okay kill twin okay kill twin that start that start and then we're gonna open parentheses semicolon at the end okay so this is pretty much the code and just make sure that when we go into the function let me see function create that we have this ball set to the game that add the sprite like here let me show you in the there was the first part 
uh, not the update they was saying okay so they put this ball is assigned to the game that add that is prior in the 50 2050 and ball but what we are using is pretty much the same we didn't update it we just leave it in gain that world that with multiply by 0 0.5 and then as a second parameter we have the gain that world the height minus 25 and as a third parameter we have the ball itself and then we just pretty much we go into the index that html file and just open with live server and as you can see the this is the code it's working so far so every time the ball touches the bricks the bricks are not only are kind of disappearing but the ball is wobbling and the bricks are every time is, there is a collision the the bricks are slowly disappearing or very much colliding on itself so this is pretty much the code that we have so far just keep this one let me see keep this in mind it has to be the ball is assigned to the game that add that sprite and then we don't update this this piece of code as they are showing you here they are pretty much uh, they are telling you to update it maybe to to the game that is sprite and then passing these three numbers but no it has to we don't update this number we just add this little piece of code here so that's what we have and then just let's go through this so you can see what's happening here one when defining a new twin, you have to specify which property will be twin. In our case, instead of hiding the bricks, instantly when they hit by the ball, we will make their width and height scale to zero, so they will nicely disappear. To the end, we will use the add a twin method to specify and break that scale as the argument, as this is what we want to twin. Two, the two method defines the state of the object at the end of the twin. It takes an object containing the chosen parameters, desired ending values, the scale takes a scale value. 1 being 100% of size, 0 being 0% of size, etc. The time of the twin and the milliseconds and the type of easing to use for the twin. We will also add the optional uncomplete event handler, which defines a function to be executed when the twin finishes. The last thing to do is to start the twin right away using the start. And this is pretty much what we what we did here. And uh, let me see, it was in the. If we go, okay, here in the kill twin that is starting the line 124 in my case so we have that and that is the expanded version of the twin definition but we can also use the shorthand and this is the shorthand we have the gain that add and then that twin we pass in brick that scale to we pass in this object then this number and then the phaser that is in that is last take that out and then the boolean true and then 100 percent this twin will double the bricks scale in half a second using elastic easing will start automatically and have a delay of 100 milliseconds so you can compare the code right here or you can go into the into the github repository but yeah so let's refresh the game so this is pretty much what we have here so we have the paddle the ball and when the ball is hitting the bricks the bricks are slowly disappearing as you can see as well and the scale is going to zero so they are slowly disappearing and that's pretty much all that we have for the animations and twins